last game, you witnessed the debut of King Richard Brown's New Order of Chaos. Tonight on Roller Jam, Brown's rough roller derby throwbacks battle the extreme skaters of the Nevada Hot Dice. Dice captain Mark Weber has no respect for his elders. I'm on a retirement tour, you know. I'm out to take all these old farts out of the league. But boycott rumors are swirling. Captain Mark D'Amato and his New York enforcers chose not to skate in the season opener. Aligned with D'Amato's anti-league suck organization, Weber must decide if he will do the same. Who's going to come to play this time? Find out next on Roller Jam. Jam. The World Skating League tonight comes from you from the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas. Hi, everybody. I'm Rory Marcus along with Lee Hawk Rearman. Tonight, what a matchup. The Illinois Riot going against the home team here in Las Vegas, the Nevada Hot Dice. And last time we saw the Riot Hawk, little Richard Brown had that team playing some tough skating. Well, he had them playing some tough skating, but they lost. Yeah. Little Richard Brown never likes to lose, but I think the big story tonight is the fact that Little Richard Brown built these Nevada Hot Dice. They're called the X-Men. Jason McDaniel, Micah Martin, Mark Weber, all were led by Little Richard Brown last season. His imprint on them is lasting, Rory. And it was a strange scene a few minutes ago in the Hot Dice locker room where Mark D'Amato of the New York Enforcers had a chat with this team. You go out there, you kick Richard's butt. Remember what he did to you? He abandoned this team, right? right? You go out there, you kick his butt, I cover all the fines. You mess Richard up, I'll cover the hospital bill. Can you imagine going into another team's locker room and offering to pay their fines if indeed they are fine? But that is what Mark D'Amato has done for the Nevada Hot Dice to skate tonight. Well, I just want to know, how does this Mark D'Amato fellow, we know he's maniacal, we know he's demonic, we know we got all kinds of catchy names for him. How does this guy always immerse himself? Last week, he boycotted, didn't play. This week, he's not even scheduled to play. He's in the other team's lineup, in there paying fines. Unbelievable. Mark D'Amato always finds a way to make a big difference, whether good or bad. And don't forget, little Richard Brown last week, when we last saw him was writhing in pain he was injured he was helped off the track they've been working on him prior to the game tonight and look at the look on his face he kind of looks like oh i'd like to get out there but i'm not sure if i'm going to be able to make it or not we'll see if little richard brown is able to play tonight or not as we get set to take a look at the illinois Lions coming on the track and here come the women and you know who their leader is spiritually and physically Richard Brown brought her to the team. It has made a big difference. The Illinois Riot and Patsy Delgado, definitely a veteran team. Now with the men coming out, we'll see if Brown's even able to skate out during the introduction. And I guess not, because in the back of the pack, there is Ray Roblin. It looks like he's going to be leading this club tonight. So the Illinois Riot might be a little bit short without Richard Brown. But here comes the Nevada Hot Guys. We all know about we talked about them at the top. Of course, we've got the showgirls, their signature showgirl sizzle. They're led, of course, by Kim Hart, who's always a black who's never at a loss for words. We've got the bowlers going. Here comes the men. I, actually, I'm, I'm looking for Kim Hart. I don't quite see her, Roy. Well, I have not had any reports about any kind of injuries or any reason she wouldn't be here. There's Mark Weber. He's here and ready to go. And let's take a look around and see if Kim Hart will. Oh, spoke too soon. She's not only here, but she's really here. Well, they call them the showgirls, Kim Hart, the spiritual, emotional, and now fashion leader of the showgirls of the Nevada Hot Dice women. I tell you what, I wait for this moment all week when we get to see their signature move, the showgirl sizzle. It's been a trend throughout the league. Denise Logan started it, then Suzanne Shaleen coming in with different uniforms. And now, Richard Brown is on the track. So a little bit of a Willis Reed move for Richard Brown. He's going to come out here even though he's banged up, even though he's hurt. He is going to try and lead his team in this game against the Nevada Hot Dice. So you've got to give him credit for guts, if nothing else. 
Here are the rules of Roller Jam. There are four six-minute periods. The women skate periods one and three. The men skate periods two and four. There are five skaters per team, two jammers, and three blockers. The blockers wear white helmets. The jammers have the black helmet with the stripe. Points are scored when jammers lap opposing team members. Here's an example of what I was just talking about. The jammer for the green team breaks out from the pack and circles the track. For each member of the red team that he or she passes, one point is earned. Well, nothing can be simple enough for me except key matchups. The key matchups today are Kim Hart, the queen of the showgirls in her new silver helmet, versus Patsy Delgado, the emerging powerhouse in the World Skating League, Rory. We'll get a chance to see them right off the bat as the women go to the track for period number one. Four periods in Roller Jam, remember? And this game between the Illinois Riot and the Nevada Hot Dice, there's the signal right there that we're ready to go into period number one. And look for Patsy Delgado to try to immediately get underneath the helmet, or, or if not the silver helmet, of some of these hot dice, as she tried to do to Denise Lowe the last time out, Rory. First jam of the night, and Kim Hart takes the jammer's helmet, which in this case is silver. So there goes your rules of roller jam. And Ileana Bonilla has the more conventional helmet, but down she goes here in this first jam. Well, she's got the silver helmet on. I guess that's a jammer helmet, Roy. But Kim Hart, the heartbreaker, taking full advantage of the new fashion, I guess, statements we're all making here in the World Skating League. Good for her. This is, after all, the Silver State. So she has on the silver outfit, the silver helmet, but now she has Patsy Delgado in front of her. And Patsy Delgado says, I've been around a long time. I've got these quad skates on, and here's a headbutt for you. Silver helmet or not, that took her out. Well, the last time we saw Delgado, she went after Denise Lowe with a vengeance because of her outfit. Well, a little more of the save from Delgado. Last time it was loaded. Well, today, Kim Hart saw Delgado's fury up close in person. Believe me when I tell you that Patsy Delgado is a throwback to the old days. She was a star in the roller game. She was an L.A. T-bird, and she doesn't care for anybody out of uniform. She'll make that statement. So no scoring on that first jam, Hawk, as the Nevada Hot Dice get a chance to play in front of their home crowd here. Well, watch for the showgirl sizzle. They've always been a really tight unit led by Kim Hart, but Kim Hart is trying to set herself apart, similar to what Stacy Blitz did last year to her bond squad. Let's see how Laura Weintraub and the other showgirls react to it, Rory. Laura Weintraub's out there right now for the hot dice, but she's out number two on one. She's going to try and split the middle. It didn't work, did it? Weintraub goes down, and now the riot trying to get on the scoreboard first. Well, these hot dice came out. I think the hometown might have put them a little bit into a lull. They might have been celebrating too much, maybe out a little bit late too, late, too late last night. And he's right going to take full advantage. Patsy Delgado helps out of the jam, and that gives the Illinois Riot the first points in the game as they call off the jam. Patsy Delgado always seems to be in the middle of something, doesn't she? She gets a shove there from Katie Cooper. But Patsy Delgado is in this game to win it and not back down for a minute in the World Skating League. We're back in just a minute. Four to nothing. The Illinois Riot have the early lead, and I do mean early in this first period of this game between the Riot of the Hot Dice and Kim Hart has grabbed her personalized silver jammers helmet again. Well, she looks like a hood ornament. What better place to don this attire than here in Vegas? The showgirl hood ornament, Kim Hart, making her presence known early. Once again, down goes Ileana Bonilla of the Riot, and the Dice have two jammers out there, Kim Hart and Mindy Smith, as they look to pick up a whole bunch and get on the scoreboard here early in this game. And guess who's back there to try and deny them the points? None other than Patsy Delgado, and she's tough to go around. But not this time. They're going to get some help in the pack, and Hart and Mindy Smith both go through and pick up a whole truckload of points. Boy, this is a big jam for the hot dice. They went in here down four to nothing. Now they call it off, and they picked up four each. Four for Smith, four for Hart, eight big points for the dice. Boy, she likes to celebrate and show off, doesn't she? Well, they call it the showgirl sizzle. They call her the heartbreaker. And we've got a melee going on over here. That's number 35. Shay Brown, we know the story between her mixing it up with Denise 
Sloan, who she modeled herself after. And these Illinois Riot may have a lot of experience, but Shane Brown says, hey, I'm no longer a novice in this league. You gotta mess with me if you wanna mess with anybody. Well, guess who she was messing with? It wouldn't be Patsy Delgado, would it? <laughs> you bet it was. Welcome to Roller Jam, Patsy. Eight to four, the hot dies lead it. Patsy Delgado right now might be thinking, wow, this isn't at all like it was for the team members. Well, Mindy Smith out really quickly. We've seen her out there a couple of times. These Nevada hot dice depend a lot on her as she goes down with number 53, Billy Guthrie. They both went down, and that gives Kim Hart a chance to catch up on the jam. But then she's taken down, and the Illinois Riot have a chance to score again with Billy Guthrie. Billy Guthrie's on the jam for the Illinois Riot as they trail in this game 8 to 4. 19 seconds left in the jam, and they both enter the back of the pack. Oh! Look at that move! Vicky Delgado take out her own skater, and the points go to Mindy Smith of the hot dice. Well, if these Illinois Riot represent the old time, Mindy Smith is definitely one of the proud town players, one of the newcomers, one of the youngsters here in the World Skating League. And she has speed, speed, more speed, and right there she showed these Illinois Riot. to death and score some points for my Nevada Hot Dice teammates. That was a little embarrassing for Patsy Delgado to knock her own jammer down. Time for one last jam in this period with the home team, the Nevada Hot Dice, out in front of this game, 9-4. to four. The Illinois Riot, they put this team together in a hurry. They put it together behind closed doors. Richard Brown and Patsy Delgado and Ray Robles. Wouldn't you love to be in on some of their practices and find out exactly what they are thinking as they put this team together? Well, the big double whip here, free Laura Weintrup. She's one of the largest jammer females in the World Skating League. And she right now is mixing it up with number 57. That's Crystal Schneider. And Laura Weintrup may have her hands full with Crystal Schneider. I guess Crystal's one of those uh, bring a little experience to the table because Laura Weintrup's much bigger. 15 seconds left on the jam as they both reach the back of the pack at the same time. And let's see if either one of them could score any points. I guess not is the answer for Crystal Schneider. But the hot dice, yeah, they're going to get at least one. As they call the jam off, the period comes to an end, and they gave the hot dice one point to give them a 10-4 to 4 lead after one skating period. Well, so far, it's been show girl, show time. And Shea Brown continues to mix it up after the whistle. Let's listen in. Oh, two sisters, and when they put the uniforms on, I guess it doesn't matter. Shea Brown and Shauna Brown of the Illinois Riot. Well, the Dice have the lead 10 to 4, but little Richard Brown is getting ready to come onto the track for the Illinois Riot. Let's see what he has up his sleeve. And for the Dice, he'll go against Mark Weber, a former student of little Richard Brown. It should be interesting. Stay with us. We'll be right back to Las Vegas. 10 to 4, the score. Welcome back from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. It's 10 to 4. And right now, little Richard Brown getting set to go. Along with the king of the world is our own Broadway, Danny Wolf. All right, Richard, first of all, I know you twisted your ankle last week. What's the status? How do you feel? Are you going to skate? Your business. I can have a broken leg and go out there and whip anybody out there. Well, I doubt that. But I want to ask you. Well, you're entitled to your wrong opinions. Let me ask you. We know the hot dice are a member of Suck. That's the model's little uh, boycott coalition, Skaters United Coalition. They are skating under basically the leadership of your ex-buddy, Mark D'Amato, and he has said if they hurt anyone, if they maim anyone, big deal. He'll pay the suspensions. I brought the dice up when I was on their team. I taught them everything they know. They couldn't whip their way out of a wet paper bag without me. No other team can do it without me. I am the man. I'm the king. I'm the boss. I'm going to rule this sissy league, this world sissy league. WSL, world sissy league. Back to you, Hawk and Rory. Well, I don't know if it's the World Sissy League, but the key matchup is between Little Richard Brown and Mark Weber. Little Richard Brown, he says he wants to rid all the sissies out of the World Skating League, and he always has a way to back it up. And Mark Weber, he says he's on a re retirement tour to put old-timers like Little Richard Brown out of the league into retirement. But a big question right now is the health of Little Richard Brown. track for period number two and the hot dice so far have gotten the best of the arrive with a 10 to 4 lead and the jam is off and little richard's out there Lori. little richard 
twisted ankle or not, he's out there skating. Say what you want about it, but he's a tough guy. And so is Micah Martin, who is on the jam by himself now, trying to build up the hot dice lead. Well, Mark Weber is really going after Little Richard Brown. Little Richard Brown, of course, was his protege. And Little Richard Brown was here with the hot dice. And down goes Micah Martin at the hands of Ray Robles. Unbelievable. I'll tell you what, if Richard Brown is hurt, it's Ray Robles who's going to pick up the slack. Oh! And now Robles gives the jammer to Brown, and he sends him back first into the rail. Gee, Richard looks like he feels okay to me. That's the old Richard Brown we know. Jason McDaniel, little Richard Brown was the leader of these guys, and he's moved over to form this Illinois Riot team. Well, those X-Men may have all the youth and all the speed, but what's that old bad saying about experience? Well, whatever it is, little Richard Brown has a lot of it. So does Ray Robles. He's out there in his quad skates, and he's making a big difference in this game. If this team is to win and Richard Brown is a little bit banged up, it's probably going to be Robles who keys the victory for the riot. But right now, they're trailing it. 10 to 4. The hot dice have the lead. And out of the jam, that's Big Mo Sanders for the falling down as he tried to get out of the pack for the hot dice. That's number 36, and that's Jason McDaniel. And he's going to knock Sanders into the rail and over the rail. Well, this is our first look at Jason McDaniel here this season, and we all know he has the finesse and the agility. Well, he showed Big Mo Sanders, hey, a pack of punch, too, pal. He's from Springfield, Missouri, but he gets to the back of the pack, and there's Mr. Robles again. He's going to get some help now with 20 seconds left on the jam. Robles on the outside of the track and down he goes. That's two big points for the hot dice. And what a move by Jason McDaniel. Well, Jason McDaniel, you see the two of the three X-Men. That's Jason McDaniel, and he is just amped up. We saw him take down Big Mo Sanders, and then a little bit later, we saw him score the points I tell you, these X-Men, they say, hey, I don't care how much experience you've got. We are here. We are here to stay. You guys are the newcomers to the league. We've been here longer than you have, people. He calls that the twister. I didn't know you could fly on skates, but apparently he can, Jason McDaniel. And the hot dice have built up a 12-4 to lead in front of their home fans here in Las Vegas. Richard Brown up there in the front of the pack, just bumping with Mark Weber. Brown trying to free his jammer. He looks like he's skating all right on that sore ankle. Is he going to get a jammer out? You bet he is. But so do the hot dice. It's number 35, Christian Salvia. And Christian Salvia, they call him the love machine. Well, I don't know how much love, or maybe no love in Whoville, as Mike Tanner takes him right down. Mike Tanner hits the back of the pack now, and he's going to try and get an assist from Ray Robles. Let's see what kind of move Robles has in mind. Oh, he took down two hot dice, and that allows Tanner to get through there and score points. And look at Robles. Boy, he's in love with himself, isn't he? says it doesn't need anybody's help. I don't know. Little Richard Brown brought this guy in to compliment him. A lot of talk like that. This may backfire for Little Richard Brown. I don't know if there's enough room for the ego of Little Richard Brown to go along with what seems to be an emerging ego of Ray Robles. Well, I think they're on the same page, though, Hawk. They're the same type of player, same type of skater. And you see them all the time talking to each other. Right now, they're skating up the track together. They're talking things over. They like to play the same type of game. It might not always be by the rules, but that's the way they play. A couple of old-timers, veterans, they know all the tricks. And right now, Robles is going to take a breather on this jam as the Hot Dice still have a six-point lead in this game. The riot sends Andy Wallace out, and the Hot Dice is going to counter that with Micah Martin. And Micah Martin on the inside. Last time out against the Florida Sun Dogs, he took a beating. Well, more of the same for Wallace in the hands, this time of Michael Martin of the Nevada Hot Dogs. He's getting to know the feel of that track real well. Oh, Richard Brown is out of the building. He finds himself in Henderson, Nevada, instead of Las Vegas. He won't like that. Michael Martin's making these riot look like they're standing still. Oh, he's the hot dice. Now Brown is back. 
back there again. Can he stop him? He turns the block and he missed him entirely. And Martin falls off the jam. And Michael Martin is putting on a clinic here. He may not have a lot of years under his belt, but it is definitely showtime. In the first period, it was the Kim Hart show. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Martin, the student, has given the master little Richard Brown a clinic. The X-Men are emerging as stars of the league. Hey, Illinois Ryan, like I said before, you guys are newcomers here now, pal. Here we go with the last jam of the first half. I thought Richard Brown said the hot dice couldn't do anything without his splendid leadership. It looks like he was wrong on that point. 14 to 6, the hot dice have the eight-point lead, and now they get another jam around. It's Jason McDaniel, the kid from Springfield, Missouri, and chasing him on the jam for the uh, Illinois Riot is Blaze Leon, and he gets the better of him this time. And these X-Men are really showing the Illinois riot. They're not going to be pushed around. We see Jason McDaniel out as a chamber of bus doing a great job. Did you see Richard Brown and Ray Robles take that pack down? Two guys almost knocked the entire pack down. Three they red, one white. Three riot red, points. One white. One hot guys point. And that means the hot dice still lead it as we get close to halftime. And little Richard Brown is not happy about the way this first half has gone. Either is Ray Robles. I'm sure they'll come back strong in the second half. 15 to 9 the score. Welcome back to Las Vegas, everybody. Rory Marcus along with Lee Hawk Rearman. We're seeing the Illinois riot. Little Richard Brown, Ray Robles, Patsy Delgado, a very tough old school bunch of roller derby stars. Going against the Nevada Hot Dice and Mark Weber trying to show him who's boss now. Well, absolutely. This is a, a typical battle of student versus teacher. Little Richard Brown built these X-Men for the, for the Nevada Hot Dice. And I tell you what, we couldn't have asked for a more marquee battle. And Little Richard Brown has been on the track tonight trying to prove that the X-Men are really nothing. And there have been times he's been pretty successful. Watch the forearm right to the midsection of Micah Martin. Oh, does that hurt. Well, and he's getting a little bit of help from his friend Ray Robles. New here to the World Skating League, but not new to a little bit of power to his punch, as the Nevada Hot Dice X-Men saw right there. I didn't know Ray Robles could fly. Well, Mark Weber and the Dice will try and do something about it in the second half. Now let's go to Julie Lynch. Thanks, Rory. Well, we've all been waiting to find out whether the Hot Dice will boycott their first game in support of Mark D'Amato's unofficial union. And the answer has come down from the scoundrel himself, enforcer Mark D'Amato. The real question is, why would Mark Weber bow to Mark D'Amato? I mean, this Hot Dice leader is about as cocky and egocentric as they come. Maybe this Mark Weber is overcompensating for something else. He doesn't have. I'll tell you what, guys, impressing me a whole bunch is this young Weber. I'll tell you, it uh, reminds me so much of the Sean Atkinson when he was a young man. In a world full of men with large egos, this compliment by Quake Captain Sean Atkinson's father may have created a monster. There is no comparison between me and Sean Atkinson, okay? I am better than Sean. His old man even said so. With the departure of Richard Brown from the Hot Dice, young Mark Weber's extreme skating overblown attitude I am the bomb and disdain for the older skaters in the league have made him a perfect leader for a team full of generation Xers and Weber's main target is the number one player in the league and third generation roller derbyist Sean Atkinson when told of Weber's plan Atkinson replied in his normal tone how are you gonna beat the Ack attack when you got string on baby look at the rock the rock brother in an unprecedented move, Mark D'Amato of the Enforcers went into the Dice locker room before the game and told them to skate. Let's find out more now as D'Amato is with our own Broadway Danny Wolf. I have with me Mark D'Amato. And Mark, I've been watching you, watching the Hot Dice from the sidelines. They're skating under your consent tonight. That's right. I now have control of three teams. The Enforcers, the Hot Dice, and the, and the uh, Rustlers. Right. Right. And a name from the past I heard. You've actually hired an attorney. Someone Roller Jam fans might remember actually wasn't an ally of yours. If people remember the Posse and Suzanne situation. But you've hired an attorney to get rid of this Kenneth Logue the third. Right. I have hired William J. Scheister. Right, huh? I'm sorry, Schaefer, to represent me in these uh, proceedings. And now let me say also, before this game, actually last week, Kenneth Logue III said if the Hot Dice didn't show up tonight,
tonight. He had Ohio and Pennsylvania, one of those two franchises, ready to go. Do you think the hot dice were scared? That's why they're skating. They didn't want to be replaced. The hot dice are skating under my recommendation. And I will pay all fines that are occurred during this game. All right, well, you just heard from Mark D'Amato, kind of a, a leader here of the hot dice, a tutor for them, and he'll pay all fines and suspensions. It's coming out of your pocket. Let's go back to you, Orion Hawk. All right, thanks a lot, Danny. I'm glad it's not coming out of our pocket, Hawk, as we get set to go here into the third quarter. That's coming up next, the second half. And I wonder what will happen with the sisters, Shauna Brown and Shea Brown. And they'll be on the track opposing one another as the hot dice try and pull it out against the riot. Right now, it's 15 to 9. We'll be right back. Stay with us. We're back in Las Vegas, 15 to 9. The hot dice have the lead, and obviously, period three is about to start. The women take to the track. Should be a great second half, Hawk. Well, it should be a great second half. You remember last time out, these Riot really took it to the Sun Dogs in the second half. Let's see if these hot dice have been watching some game films in their off week. All right, and Kim Hart grabs a Jammers helmet, her own personal Jammers helmet, and she's out there to try and score points for the dice. Well, like I said earlier, she looks like a hood ornament with this chrome helmet, chrome outfit. Kim Hart never wanted to miss an opportunity to show herself, and right now she's showing herself potentially as a scorer. And now she's out with Mindy Smith. They have two Jammers with a chance to score points. Patsy Delgado, she's tough in the back of that pack for the Illinois Riot, and she takes on Kim Hart one-on-one -on -one here. And let's see what Delgado has in mind for Hart and vice versa in this first jam of the second half. Well, Delgado has, has become personally donned herself, I guess, the fashion police. She went after Denise Lowe in the last game, and she's going after the silver-clad Kim Hart in this one. Well, she's down on her back right now, and Kim Hart gets in there and scores points. So no matter what she donned herself, it was the uh, heartbreaker who got the best of it that time. Well, the showgirl sizzle continues. The triumvirate of Kim Hart, Laura Weintraub, and Shea Brown really came to play her today, Rory, and Kim Hart, a little showgirl sizzle right there with the finger and the tongue and the sizzle and the whole thing. Oh, my gosh, I love this stuff. Oh, if this keeps up, Kenneth Logo will wonder what the heck he got himself into. He'll say, whatever happened to the uniforms they used to wear? Not only in 1959, but how about 1999? But here we go to the second jam of this second half with the hot dice leading this game by a cool 10. And the Raya trying to cut into that lead. Well, and right here we're seeing why these Nevada hot dice are, are, have so much potential. It's just the physical ability of a person like Laura Weintraub. They called on her a lot last year, Rory. She didn't always produce, but look for her this year. At least I look for her this year with that size, that strength, and that speed to really produce the Nevada Hot Dice. They're, they're a team to be reckoned with. They may be a team to be reckoned with, but right now the Illinois Riots getting more on the scoreboard as Norma Marshall calls the jam off and flat on her stomach. You see right there, Katie Cooper, and gets an extra knee in the back for her troubles. Well, Delgado, you see her beating on Katie Cooper there a little bit. She, didn't, she couldn't find Kim Hart, so I guess she decided to pick on Katie Cooper as little Richard Brown. Gives a little advice to Patsy Delgado. And hitting in the head if you want to, keep talking. Patsy Delgado shakes her head. In her mind, she just can't get a break. Richard Brown's going to sit in the penalty box with her and console her. When you get out of this box, you go home. Everything she does, uh, they put her in the penalty box. That's the way Patsy Delgado sees it. Well, Patsy Delgado, I was talking about earlier, Ray Robles seems to be a little bit of a loose cannon out there. You see a little bit of a loose cannon attitude from Delgado. I'm not convinced that little Richard Brown doesn't have his hands full with a lot more ego than he had counted on. Well, Richard Brown pointed up there at that scoreboard and said, look, I'm talking about that, too. We're behind by 10 in this game. And Crystal Schneider is out there for the riot. But she's well behind in this jam right now. More points coming for the hot dice. She called the jam off after one point. And Mindy Smith is just a fantastic asset that these Illinois Riot have no way to contend with, Roy. She's so fast and so agile. 
agile, but there's just no way they could do it. Similar to what Jason McDaniel provides for the Nevada Hot Dyes men. Mindy Smith is the leading scorer on this club. She's so fast, she got over to pose for the camera next, prior to the next play. And the score continues to get worse and worse for Richard Brown's team. It's 21 to nine, the Hot Dyes are up. And they're just adding to their lead. And there you see her, number 36, Mindy Smith. She's wearing that black jammer's helmet again. Only the players with the black helmets can score points. They start at the back of the pack, and they have to lap opposing skaters. That's how you score points in the World Skating League. One Patsy Delgado back on the track. We'll see what kind of words of wisdom she got from little Richard Brown in the penalty box and see if they can somehow get these guys back into the game. And out there, 57 Crystal Schneider. They need points badly. They're down by 12 big ones here in this third period. Mindy Smith is out there for the hot dice, but down she goes, and now the Riot has a chance to cut it to the lead. And Patsy Delgado is going to run some interference for the Riot. There's one. There's two. There's number three. She's taking them all down. Let's see if she can get them all and get four points. With Delgado's help, she does get it. That's a big four for the Illinois Riot. And I don't know what the heck little Richard Brown said to Delgado while they were sitting in the penalty box. But whatever she said, maybe because of a little bit of a rest. Uh-oh, look out. She came out, and here we go. Open, say it's something, or her fist clenched once and somewhat. Fighting with Katie Cooper back there and being threatened now with being thrown out of the game. The men are coming up next. Mark Weber looking at things through rose-colored glasses. She'll go up against Richard Brown as the Dice have a big lead, 21 to 13. Stay with us. The medal decided in the fourth and final period. We're back on the strip in Las Vegas. Roller Jam continues into the final period. Danny Wolf is trackside. All right, with just one period remaining, the Nevada Hot Dice with a big eight-point lead. I'll tell you, they look awesome. Feeding off their home crowd. They're skating better than ever. I got to say one thing. Micah Martin, Jason McDaniel, and of course, Mark Weber. Mark Weber's really coming to his own. I hope to talk to him after the game. And I'll tell you, the riot right now, they're in disarray. Don't blame little Richard Brown. The whole team skating poorly. Back to you guys. Here we go into the fourth and final period. And guess who grabs the jammer's helmet trying to bring his team back into the game? That's not a bad start. Little Richard Brown says, give me the helmet. I'll get the points. Well, he's encouraging his teammates to climb on his back. But I don't know if little Richard Brown with the, with the wounded ankle has enough left here at the end of this game to pull it out for him, Roy. I just don't think he can do it. He reaches the back of the pack, and he signals with his partner, Ray Robles, and says, Ray, run a little interference. Give me a whip. And here he comes. Oh, he uses the strength to get a couple of points, and then he hits the track. Little Richard Brown still has 20 seconds to go in the jam. Another whip from Robles. And Micah Martin is taken out of the play. Brown will score another one and then call it off. That's a good start for the Riot if they want to get back into this game. The captain said, give me the helmet, I'll go get him. Well, somebody really emerging for the Riot is number, big number 56, Mo Sanders. He is one of those guys that is one of the new protégés to little Richard Brown. So a lot of the dirty tricks, but definitely positive play for the Illinois Riot. Maybe pass along to Bo Sanders. And guess what? In one jam, the riot caught him and tied this game up. And now the hot dice trying to regain the lead, and they get the lead jammer out. That's number 36, Jason McDaniel. He's out, and there's the guy you were just talking about, Hawk Bo Sanders for the riot. And as they approach the back of the pack, trying to get the better of one another, waiting back there is Ray Robles. Some points and put the home team back in the lead. Robles waits for him. Robles sharpened up those elbows during the uh, halftime, I think. Man, can he throw that right elbow. He won't let McDaniel get by him. 13 seconds left in the jam, and most said, oh! Ray Robles never knew what hit it. Get moving. Mark 
Weber has knocked Robles maybe out of the game. He's getting up slowly. Boy, between he and Richard Brown, those two guys uh, are going to feel a little bump and bruise tomorrow night, aren't they? Well, I think Robles may be a little aggravated because he helped Mark Weber develop this move to roll them bones. Well, somebody in the person, a little Richard Brown, forgot to warn Ray Robles, and you see the result as the X-Men celebrate. Mark Weber, Jason McDaniel, little Richard, look out for what you created because they're coming back to haunt you. <laughs> 22 to 21 now the hot dice pack on top by one this one's gonna go right down to the wire I think what a game tonight here in Las Vegas between the hot dice and the riot and now both teams have jammers out but look out there goes Christian he's over that rail and the riot look to regain the lead again and Mike Tanner along with Sanders is really coming in to play for the riot and emerge as the young guns along with all the old timers and it's a pull away rory they're going to try and outrun them the riot are going to give a whip to number 54 mike tanner let's see if he can catch up and let's see if he can score any points there's one he sends him over the rail he gets davison for two he's going to try and get another one he's already taken the lead for the riot there's three there's four he's going to get them talk about their physical ability and their ability to play but why do a pull away when there's still this many people left on the track like a Mike Tanner who have enough speed to catch up to you Roy maybe these hot dice have all the ability in the world or but maybe like a headless snake I'll tell you what Richard Brown and Ray Robles have the experience Mike Tanner had the speed but his team on top stay with us we'll be back In Las Vegas, what a game we've had tonight between the Nevada Hot Dice and the Illinois Riot. It's been a close one. Right now, the Riot having the best of it, 27 to 22. The Hot Dice trying not to lose this game in front of their home crowd, and they have a two-on-one advantage in this jam for the Riot. Number 53, that's Andy Wallace. He loves to go over that rail. He doesn't love it, but he seems to spend a lot of time there. Oh, look out. That's uh, Micah Martin for the Hot Dice, scoring points in bunches. Micah Martin, his hair is as green as his pants. He calls it off. But the hot dice celebrate. No well, celebration I, there, though. And I gotta say, I was counting these Illinois Riot for dead. They came back in that last jam, scored a bunch of points to catch up quick, and now it's all tied up, and we're going into a white knuckler, Rory. I'm glad Micah Martin took his helmet off. I wanted to see that green hair. Looks like he rubbed it on the belt of one of the tables here in Las Vegas. Look at the skaters in the infield. They're all on their feet, and so is the crowd, as we are tied up at 27. And who takes the jammer's helmet for the Orion but little Richard Brown? And is he going to score? And Weber, the student, showed the teacher a thing or two. I think he's got a little of experience of his own under his belt, Rory. And he's showed little Richard Brown on that jam he's lost so far. But he has Sanders and Robles to try and get by to try and win it. Now he calls for a little assistance. Let's see what Weber can do. He gives a whip. They're going to give a double whip. Can he get through? Big whip, 
Mark Webber. Well, Texas Bulldog takes down everybody. These X-Men have arrived, and they're celebrating in the streets of Las Vegas. The hometown crowd feeding the enthusiasm a little headbutt. Jason McDaniel, you deserve it. Big victory. And I'll tell you what, I think this is one time where youth won out over experience. Richard Brown's been skating for, what, about 50 years? It didn't matter in this game, though, because the dice pull it out. Mark Webber is victorious, and he's with Broadway Danny Wolf in the infield. All right, I'm here with the star of the game, no doubt, Mark Weber. Amazing come from behind victory. You had the roll of the bones, Han Robles, and then the winning jam in front of your home crowd. You got to be loving it. Oh, I'm loving it. Let me ask you something. Did you doubt me? Did you doubt me? No, I got to say, you are the leader of this team now. You were amazing. Uh, don't get mad at me if I call you a miniac, but, I mean, you had shades of uh, Sean Atkinson out there. I mean, you were a man possessed. You should call me Sean Atkinson because I am better than Sean Atkinson. Look, Sean's out here trying to be me. That's what it's about, you know. I am, I'm what Sean wants to be and what he'll always want to be. And your leadership role on this team, you don't have Richard Brown anymore. He was pretty much your teacher, but you took your teacher down. See, I don't think Richard was our teacher, you know. I showed him what I could do. You know what I'm saying? He, he did nothing. He did nothing for us. He was just a slacker. You know? Now you think you guys are ready to go all the way. In fact, earlier today, you know the Wild West shootout's coming up. You had a prediction. Uh, let the fans know your Joe Namath-like prediction. Just like Joe Namath said, you know, we will win this tournament. I'm guaranteeing to all my fans in Vegas, we are going to win this Wild West shootout. Good, good luck to you, Mark Weber. Great job tonight. Look forward to seeing you. I know you'll win a bunch of games for your team this year. Back to you, Rory and Hawk. Tremendous effort by the Hot Dice and Mark Weber. They may very well win a whole bunch of games as Mark Weber goes out to greet his adoring public here in Las Vegas after the big Hot Dice win. Will Mark D'Amato and the Enforcers show up? They're scheduled to play against the California Quakes. Kenneth Lowe might have something to say about it. Well, I know one thing we're going to get. It's a lot of slam pack action. That kid right there, he had the sign. Suzanne Angeline has the look, as does Denise Loden. I tell you what, Rory, we're two of the luckiest men alive right here. That's right. Who knows who will show up and who knows what they'll be wearing when they do get here. For tonight, the Nevada Hot Dyes have reason to celebrate as they win it 29 to 27. For Lee Hawk Rearman, for Julie Lynch, for Broadway Danny Wolf, I'm Rory Marcus. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Good night from Las Vegas. Guests of the WSL Roller Jam stay at the MGM Grand Casino, the city of entertainment.